you get drafted by the Jets yeah. in the third round, you on a four and twelve team, I think yeah. in fourteen. Then you, but you didn't, then you're in Cleveland, yeah. and you think it's going to be a reset. You're on a one and fifteen team, right? You, you're about to lose your spot. Your Demario Davis have, has been through all this, and you're thinking about giving football up, mm -hmm. right? You get to the point they want you to alternate, and you say, I'm going to talk to the coach instead of clicking out and be like, what can I do better? Yeah. You yeah. had to make a you made a decision then that's now turned into all pro linebacker Demario Davis. But what was that time like for you just dealing with football and not excelling in the way that you wanted to early? Man, that's 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 a great question. And and it really is you can hit both of them, the spiritual and the football, the same way. So justification, sanctification, glorification. Justification happens right now. The minute you say, you want Jesus in your life, and you serious about that, he coming to your life justified. You're going to heaven. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Ain't nothing that you can do to break that up. You're going, boom. Sanctification, that's going to happen the rest of your life. That's meaning now I got to look like Christ. I got to image him in society. Now, how that's going to happen, that's going to play itself out in a lot of stories. That's going to happen. You're going to do good some days, bad some days. It's going to be up and down. But that's the sanctification happening. And then the glorification is when you get your new body, you ain't getting that till you die. So you got one that happens instantly, you got one that's gonna take your whole life, and then you got one that's not gonna happen until you die. So my sanctification process, my journey, I get to Cleveland. Now, I done played five, four years with the Jets. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm thinking I'm balling. Every year I'm hitting 100 tackles, I got me a couple sacks, you know what I mean? A pick here and there, force farm if I'm recovering. I'm like, that shit don't look too much different now than it did then. <laughs> right. But it was the efficiency. But I didn't know that then. So I go to Cleveland, and they, they bring another linebacker in. And I'm like, man, okay, yeah, bring a new linebacker in. Me and him from gonna be out there. We finna take care of business. They're like, hey, you finna be a backup. Backup? I came here to be the man. So I'm going through that. All of a sudden, the stress starting to hit me. I'm 27 years old, 26 years old. My body hurting. You know what I mean? My knees hurt. I ain't got no injury, but I'm hurting. I don't even want to go to practice. Like, and I'm miserable going to practice because my body just, my shoulders hurting, you know what I'm saying? Just like back. Like, man, what's going on with my body? I'm thinking I got like a disease or something that I don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Like, black people always think they got they, a disease, dog. Like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know, bro. It's like, that's so I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking that. Like, something wrong with my blood or something. I remember pulling in the driveway, just got news. I'm gonna be a backup. Just like, man, God, I'm done. I ain't got nothing left for you. I've been playing this game since I was in the fourth grade. I done gave you every snap I got. I ain't got nothing else. And I'm crying. I'm pulling the driveway, dog. I'm crying. You know, uh, I'm a sensitive person, but I ain't a very emotional person. So, like, I ain't just really just drop no tears, but I'm 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 crying. Cause I know I'm I'm done. You know, it's just like, all right, I'm on a two-year contract with Cleveland. I'm going to finish this, this season, I'm going to play next, I'm done. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go in and tell my wife, I'm like, I'm going to retire. She's like, what? And she in there cooking. I'm like, I'm going to retire. I'm going to play, I'm going to finish the year, play the next year. I'm done. She's like, all right. She know my, my wife, I always know I'm up and down. So I go to look my prayer closet. I go in my prayer closet and I pray. I'm like, God, I'm done. You know, whatever you want to do in this game, because I can feel like he's not done with me in football. Like, I'm done, but he ain't done with me in the game. I'm like, man, whatever you want to do, God, you're going to have to do it. It's literally going to be you carrying me the rest of the way. Whatever happened at this point, it is all you. It is not me. You know, and it was just like I heard that solemn voice. And it was like, thank you. Thank you for getting out of my way. Now I can work. And literally... Like the next day I'm getting ready to go in, I'm like, man, I'm going to go talk to this coach, man. He's going to put me back out there. We're going to figure out what's up. And it was just like, don't, don't go in there and say nothing. Don't go in there telling him nothing. Just go in there and ask him a question. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be obedient. Go in. I just asked. Ray Horton is my D coordinator at the yeah, time. I, play I go in and I, and I say, coach, what do you think I can do to get better? And it was like it was on the top of his mind. He was like, funny you should ask. Come here. He pulled out the tape. He pull out like three plays. He said, you see this play right here? Boom, boom, boom. Then he pull up uh, Luke Keekley. Same three plays. And it was just like a tackle out of space. They throw the ball out to the running back. I run up, miss him. Boom, he keep going. We throw a swing pass, little uh, uh, wide receiver, catch a little dump. 
hit a little shake, I miss him. And then he, he showed Luke, and, uh, and then he showed Bobby Wagner. And he's like, I see you as the same caliber player as, as these guys, but you aren't making these plays, and these are the plays that's, that's, that's hurting you. That's the difference. And he was like, do you know, know why you're not making these plays? I'm like, no, nah, I don't. I was like, I'm just missing the tackle. He's like, you playing too high. You standing straight up. You ain't bending your knees. And he's like, you need to start training with your knees bent. He's like, I want you to play tennis. I want you to play basketball. I just want you to start working with, you know, with your pad level up. And it was like right out of there, like just the, the wisdom just started to come in, like a revelation. It was like a movie. Like I could see like tennis players. I could see basketball players and how quick. And then that was the main thing in basketball. I could go score 17, but the coach pulled me out the game because I wouldn't play defense. It wasn't like I wasn't playing, but I just wasn't low enough. Now it was all making sense. So I started training like a DB ever since then. I was like, I ain't doing no more linebacker drill. I'm going to do DB drill. I'm going to be able to get in and out of my breaks quickly. And then that was the difference. So I went through a whole training offseason like that. But then I went from there, and I started to look at, like, all the articles people was writing about me. And I, because I never read it. Like, I, I was on that old LeBron, like, don't read the articles, you know what I'm saying? Like, in playoffs, stay focused. That was what I was on. So I wasn't reading the articles. So I read all them, and I realized that where they was hitting me at, they was talking about my coverage skills. You know, they was talking about my inconsistency. I was like, bet. I was like, I know exactly what I got to do. So I called my pops. I said, pops, I guarantee you, it won't happen. Maybe not be this year, but next year, I'm going to be the best linebacker in the league because I know exactly what I got to fix. And I just started grinding. And so it was just like God took that moment of brokenness and he rejuvenated my mind, he rejuvenated my body because now I had a drive, I had something I was focused on.